You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. You all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and happy Friday. It's a freaker Friday. Woo, and I needed it. Oh, my God. And I needed a fix really bad. So when I got home and I was running around like a crazy brains because I wanted to be able to have the chicken and noodles ready when I got done. So I got everything thrown together and pretty much simmering and going on the stove and I'll be able to eat when I get done. Booyah. But you don't really give a shit about that, do you? Because you're listening to the Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3. Also on the RLMRadio.xyz site, the RLM TuneIn Radio Station, the RLM Internet Radio Station, the RLM Spreaker Channel, and later on the RLM YouTube Channel. So yeah, I'm everywhere. I'm infecting the world. (laughs) <laughs> oh, with strap-ons Whew. oh no that's what rob works said <laughs> over in the rlm chat because he's kind of a perv like that in any case let's see let's go check out over on twitter real quick thank you barman for tweeting me out i truly do appreciate it i have no idea what the hell's going on but i have 382 followers That's going to go down after tonight, I'm sure. But, (laughs) because I'm sure here there be F-bombs. I'm just pretty sure. And, yeah, okay. Some of the stupid shit that's on here. It's like, really? Seriously? Oh, my Lord. Oh, well. Over here on Mines, I have no idea who's over here on Mines because I forgot to share it on Mines, but I just got a little notification that I got another bonus point. Booyah! Bonus points. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with all those points. Maybe I need to start giving them away. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Oh, Milica. Yes, I don't cook. I don't clean. I don't want kids. I don't date under six feet. Sometimes I massage my ex. Oh, no, no, not massage. Message. (laughs) And I prefer rich, hot guys. This this is this pretty little Barbie Bimbeck kind of person. Yeah, I know. I'm calling names. Ten years later, where are all the good men? Honey, you were being little Miss Particular. Um... Oh, there you go, Rob. (laughs) Okay, let's see. Uh, Where else do I need to go? Oh, yeah, that Freedoms Network site. Grimmy shared me over here. Thank you, Grim. I appreciate it. I also see that Java Doctor was sharing stuff about chemtrail cough, and it's sweeping the nation, and holy shit. Yeah, that stuff's getting nasty. Getting very nasty. And they are are playing tic-tac-toe out here. To who laid a chunk? And I'm getting real freaking tired of it. Quit it. Because, you know, I drive home every day and I wind up having to say something to those damn chemtrails in the sky. No, they are not contrails. There is a difference. Contrails dissipate qu- rather quickly. Chemtrails do not. They linger and they spread out like a web. They're nasty, nasty things. And they're also harming the soil and the critters and all that other fun stuff. So stop it, you freaking UN bass hats. Enough already. Y'all are going to be croaking off just like everybody else. I don't give a shit that you seem to think that, wait a minute here, I'm going to, the one that dies with the most toys wins. No! No, the one that dies, died. Dumbasses, stop it already. Mmm, okay, ooh, I like that meme. Okay, over here on Fakey Book, I see the lovely Gretchen is over here, as well as Catherine. I see you, Catherine, sharing all kinds of way cool stuff. Oh, and Weta shared this, posted by a teacher at a local high school. Six of my students just talked all the way through the moment of silence for the dead students. And y'all think an inanimate object is the problem. Culture is the problem. Our music celebrates drug, 
or drugs, rape, gangs, and murder. Our movies make millions off of scenes of crime and murder and gunfights. We teach our children they can do no wrong, then bash the law and order and teach them to hate authority. Society created this. Well, you know, I really can't argue a whole hell of a lot with that. We as a society are not necessarily doing well. I myself raised my children better than this. I know others that have raised their children better than this. But we are not the only parents in the world. And obviously, there are some parents that are not doing such a splendiferous job. Just putting that one out there as well. Being judgmental? Yes, I am. But, you know, there before the grace of God go I, I had a child that was a problem child. And you know what? She turned out pretty good. <clears throat> Even though I was being a mean old mommy. Mean old mommy. Let's see. They're alive. <gasps> Circles is crocheting. Sweet. And by the way, I'm over here in the RLM. And if you're listening anywhere else, come on over to the RLM chat, the Real Liberty Media. It's pound sign, pound sign, Real Liberty Media, if you do any of the hex chats or any of that stuff. and um, Or go to reallibertymedia.com and make up a nickname and join the chat. Because, yeah, it gets rather rambunctious in here. And I love it. I love it. Right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Hey, Barman, how you doing, hun? You know what? I don't think I've finished saying hi to everybody on effing. Hi, T.D. Sanders. I see you. I see you waving. Okay, um, back to the RLM-a-num-a-num, because I'm a squirrel. I see Grimner is here, and Grimner is the RLM god, don't you know? I also see the lovely Moose Girl is here, and you know what? Guess what, guess what, guess what? But wait, there's more. Moosey and Grimmy will be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball, so yeah. Things ain't done just because I shut up. <laughs> It gets real exciting later because Moosey's just about as opinionated as me. You give her a few more years and, and she'll be about as opinionated. A little, a little, a little, that too. <laughs> I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hey, Kate. How you doing? <clears throat> I don't like Mondays. I don't like Mondays either, Miss Kate. From the Boomtown Rats. Okay, let me see. Where else am I at? Uh, da, 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 da. Asmo! Hi, Asmo. How are you, hun? I also see the lovely Beth Z is here, as well as BTC Bob and Chalcedony. Circles is here, and she's crotcheting, or crocheting, however you want to pronounce that. I finished my project, and it did not turn out the way the picture said it would. Damn it. I think the pattern is not quite... Because, you know, I kept looking at what I was doing, and I've, I've been crocheting since I was, like, 10. So I know how to do these stitches, and the picture did not look anything like what was turning out. And I had to add stitches to the chain because, mm, and, uh, mm, no, I'm going to have to do some adjusting on this because it did not turn out like the picture. So, that's okay. It's still usable. It still looks pretty, but it did not turn out like the picture. <laughs> Oh, well. Let's see. Where else am I at? Where else? Where else? Um, Chloe. Double dipping a Chloe, even. Got an echo. Yoo-hoo. And looky there. I'm here. Being all kind of weird. I be Don C. Congrats, I be Don C. On your awesome news. Elderberry syrup. Warm with... Tvabacher? How in the hell do you say that, Circle? <laughs> Elderberry soup. Mm, no, I got shaky noodle soup. Nom, 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 nom. Okay. Uh, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the room, as well as JJ's. And JJ's been posting like crazy over on Twitter as well. Uh, let's see. Juana Taco is here. Mm, nope, I prefer my chicken noodle soup. I also see the lovely rain is in the house. Um, ooh. That sounds very yummy, Circles. Now I got rumblies in the tumbly. Oh, well. It will have to wait. I also see the RLM fluke 
Keys here, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, as well as Rob Works, who fired up the bubbler. Booyah! Bonus points for Rob Works. Yay! It's 36 degrees where Grim's at and 72 where Rob, Rob, honey, I love you, but you're getting, um, you're getting a single finger salute right about now. <laughs> but I mean it in a loving way, sweetheart. Honest, I do. I also see Trusty, Trust No One is in the house, as well as Beetle, who was sharing about earthquakes, and damn it, I saw it that, um, yeah, Mexico had 7.5. Ooh, that not cool. That not cool. <laughs> I understand, Rob. All this food talk, and it makes you want to go, mm, I'm hungry. Colfax 101 is showing up in the chat, as well as Dima. Dakota must have dropped out sometime. Um, I also see Dorky Lynn. Hi, woman. How are you? I also see Frumpy. 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 Kozu is in the house, and Poxified and Pompo Pon Sauce are both logged in, but marked away. And looky there, Sock Puppet. Hi, Sock. Long time no see, sweetheart. How you doing? I'm sure you're staying very, very, very busy. Slim Jim Flim is in the house. Hey, Slim Jim. And looky there, Teddy, the cuddly one, is here. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom 2, the wonderful, wonderful young man that did my intro for me. I truly do appreciate that, Phantom. I really do enjoy that. You, you did an awesome job, honey. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now... I am going to get to this one just because it's, you know, it, uh, did we just share it or did, I don't remember who shared it. Somebody over on Fakie Book shared it. Um, dum, 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 who was it? Oh, and Pete went off on a rant too. Um, bless your heart, Pete, that's a hell of a rant. Oh, Gretchen shared it. Gretchen. Gretchen used to rent from me. Gretchen is a sweetheart. And an amazing cook. Holy crap. Oh, man, that girl can cook. Okay. This is from, I know, scary, but <laughs> go figure. I am I went to Reader's Digest. <laughs> the rocket chair reading Reader's Digest. Hi. Oh, well. One teacher's brilliant strategy to stop future school shootings, and it's not about guns. Now, I read that headline and I went, oh, this could be interesting, even if it is on Reader's Digest. Let's find out. A few weeks ago, I went into my son Chase's class for tutoring. I'd emailed Chase's teacher one evening and said, Chase keeps telling me that this stuff you're sending home is math, but I'm not sure I believe him. Help, please. And she emailed right back and said, No problem. I can tutor Chase after school any time. And I said, No, not him. Me. He gets it. Help me. Aha. And that's how I ended up standing at a chalkboard in an empty fifth grade classroom while Chase's teacher sat behind me using a soothing voice to try to help me to understand the new way we teach long division. Um, let's see. And luckily for me, um, I didn't have to unlearn much because I'd never really understood the old way we taught long division, which mm, I can do division and multiplication. You start putting, you start putting, um, you know, them them alphabetical things in there, and that's when I start getting a little... Long. Although I could do algebra. I was... I hated geometry. For, of course, I hated my geometry teacher, but that probably had something to do with it. But math I usually did good with until it got beyond algebra 2, and then I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm lost. But in any case, so I understand how this mom feels. In any case, it took her a solid hour to complete one problem. But I could tell that Chase's teacher liked me anyway, and she used to work with NASA. <laughs> Big whoop. So obviously, we had a whole lot in common. Oh, really? Oh, now I really want to read this. Afterward, we sat for a few minutes and talked about teaching children and what a sacred trust and responsibility it is, which, yes, it is. 
We agree that subjects like math and reading are not the most important things that are learned in a classroom. We talked about shaping little hearts to become contributors to a large community. And we discussed our mutual dream that those communities might be made up of individuals who are kind and brave above all. And then she told me this. Every Friday afternoon she asks her students to take out a piece of paper and write down the names of four children with whom they'd like to sit the following week. The children know that this, these requests may or may not be honored. She also asks the students to nominate one student who they believe has been an exceptional classroom citizen that week. All ballots are privately submitted to her. And every single Friday afternoon after the students go home, she takes out those slips of paper, places them in front of her and studies them. And she looks for patterns. Who's not getting requested by anyone else? Who can't think of anyone to request? Who never gets noticed enough to be nominated? Who had a million friends last week and none this week? Hmm. You see, T Chase's teacher is not looking for a new seating chart or exceptional citizens. Chase's teacher is looking for lonely children. She's looking for children who are struggling to connect with other children. She's identifying the little ones who are falling through the cracks of the class's social life. She is discovering whose gifts are going unnoticed by their peers. And she's pinning down right away who's being bullied and who is doing the bullying. As a teacher, parent, and lover of all children, I think this is the most brilliant love ninja strategy I have ever encountered, which I gotta agree, I like this so far. It's like taking an x-ray of a classroom and um, to see beneath the surface of things and into the hearts of students. It's like mining for gold. The gold being those children who need a little help, who need adults to step in and teach them how to make friends, or how to ask others to play, how to join a group, or how to share their gifts. And it's a bully deterrent because every teacher knows that bullying usually happens outside her eye shot and that often kids are being bu kids and that often kids being bullied are too intimidated to share but as she said the truth comes out on those safe private little sheets of paper as chase's teacher explained this simple ingenious idea i stared at her with my mouth hang hanging open how long have you been using this system, I asked. And she said, ever since Columbine. Every single Friday afternoon since Columbine. This brilliant teacher watched Columbine knowing that all violence begins with disconnection. All outward violence begins with inner loneliness. Who are our next mass shooters and how do we stop them? She watched that tragedy knowing that children who aren't being noticed may eventually resort to being noticed by any means necessary. And so she decided to start fighting violence early and often in the world within her reach. What Chase's teacher is doing when she sits in her empty classroom studying those lists written with shaky 11-year-old hands is saving lives. I'm convinced of it. And what this mathematician has learned while using this system is something she really already knew. That everything, even love, even belonging, has a pattern to it. She finds the patterns and through those lists she breaks the codes of disconnection. Then she gets lonely kids the help they need. It's math to her. It's math. All is love, even math.
So, what a way to spend a life looking for patterns of love and loneliness, stepping in every single day, and altering the trajectory of our world. Wow. That's a good one. That's a good one. I got a, wow. Um, shoes kill children? Nuh-uh. Although my feet may hurt and I might say they're killing me. But, nah. Uh, okay. Let's see. What? Ouch, 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 ouch. Let me put this over on the effing site as well. That really is a good article. And I have to admit, I was having a little bit of a tough time there. Had to do a lot of blinking. Because no matter if you think what happened down in Florida is real or not, or a false flag or not, I am quite sure there were people that died because, you know, they, they're just col considered collateral damage. They are no longer people. They are just things. Collateral damage. It's a bunch of shit. But if it furthers an agenda, they're willing to make that sacrifice of someone else's life. And that's the unfortunate thing. Those assholes are always willing to sacrifice someone else for the good of all. Ugh. Okay, I think I'll put this over on mines too. Just because. Yeah. Okay, now. I'm going to go to my pocket. Let's see, where do I want to go first? Um, I did a wonderful, wonderful story. Now let's f see what we can find that's not quite so. <laughs> okay, we'll go with this one. I don't remember who shared it over in the RLM earlier today, but man, I saw the headline and I went, oh, yeah, this is for me. <laughs> I need to do this one. This is from hideoutnow.com. Apparently, a feminist accuses English language of being sexist and gets brilliantly schooled by a linguist. Hmm. Alrighty. So it started off with a premise that, to be fair, deserves discussion and scrutiny. A Tumblr user who refers to herself as Feminist Chewbacca <laughs> is that Michelle? Wanted to discover the root causes of patriarchal domination in society. Uh, Pre-English language, hun. And turned to the English language to investigate the inherent sexism it allegedly contains. Now, in these days of fake news and agenda pushing, it has never been more important to check your facts. And this is where feminist Chewbacca came unstuck. Reblogging a post she had found on visual poetry. She had probably not counted on being fact-checked by an actual linguist. Her poorly chosen examples were deconstructed one by one until she began to look rather basic and a bit silly. Oh, hey, I like looking a bit silly. <laughs> I don't mind it at all, actually. A couple of things to note here. Firstly, by introducing her post with the words, men fabricated the idea that they are the default sex to compensate for their biological inferiority and general superflu superflu yeah, that one, superfluousness. I hate that word. <laughs> Feminist Chewbacca sent a militant tone that isn't going to un endear her to many people. And she needs to have rock-solid arguments 
to respond to the inevitable attacks on her position. I'm thinking feminist Chewbacca is a militant tone in and of itself. Although, remembering the first three Star Wars movies, Chewie was awful cute. I like Chewie. He was just a big free teddy bear. But a feminist Chewie? Nah. Secondly, it is, of course, by no means clear that this linguist is indeed qualified or not, and his facts also deserved to be checked. After some cursory research, I can gather that while some claims hold water, others are open to argument themselves, which, you know, you're talking about stuff like language, and, and they're always open to interpretation. There is a certainly, or there is certainly more to the issue, and feminist Chewbacca is right to shine a light on it. She just went about it the wrong way. Oh, let's find out. So, what to take from this sordid affair? Well, I guess it's easy to pass off someone else's arguments as your own, but at least maybe check if they are factually correct first. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a tendency to do that myself sometimes. You know, if it gets me in the feels, then I share it, and then someone points out that I was wrong, and then I go, fuck. <laughs> and then I have to tell everybody, yeah, I screwed up. Because it's so much easier to just say, yeah, I screwed up, and then take your lumps and move on. Oh, well, back to this. <clears throat> Also, if you begin from an extremist position and with fighting words, expect people to fight back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If they come armed with facts and you are just regurgitating opinions that suit your political outlook, you are just asking to be made to look stupid. Ah, so, let me see. Okay. Um, so, men fabricated the idea that they are the default sex to compensate for their biological inferiority and general superfluousness. This is not just the natural order, this is the language of a patriarchal culture. Okay, I'm glad you think so. But the linguist wasn't having it and wrote a detailed and qualified response. Oh my God, no. You are wrong on so many levels, and as a linguist, this makes me ache something terrible. In my linguistics class in undergrad, we actually made fun of people who think like you along these lines, and for good reason, because you are wholly ignorant and are choosing to spin narratives about things and fields which you know completely nothing about, yet pretend you do. Number one, the word she. I think I will probably go ahead and share this link so you guys can follow along with the images, um, at least over here in the chat. Uh-oh, global warming is contagious. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, she, the word evolved naturally from Old English from seo or hio, which were just uh, words to refer to feminine female people evolving from Proto-Germanic words meaning that there. He has a, or he as a word evolved from the same ideas but Proto-Germanic words for this here. Your idea of patriarchal language further falls apart when you compare this part of English to other Germanic languages of which English is related, and the words in German for he and she are er and sie, S-I-E, completely unrelated. So it is by clear happenstance, not some patriarchal conspiracy, that the words he and she in English have similar form. Number two, woman. Now, I think woman came because some man was walking along and went, Ooh, man. <laughs> and it stuck. <laughs> or maybe not. Let's find out. So, oh God. This one always gets my goat. When people go for this one. 
man did not use to mean male man used to mean humanity or human being the old words in english for male adult person and female adult person were weir man and whiff man oh wow we can see this relation in words where werewolf and wife as being the remnants of the base weir and the base whiff woman evolved phonetically or phonologically there you go from the word whiffman by natural process where the f sound dropped and the i became lax man dropped the weir stem from uh, weir stem from the for the reason mostly unknown but i can guarantee have nothing to do with patriarchy because phonological change has no basis in that okay whatever phonological means number three female male and female actually come entomologically from two different words male comes from the old french mazel or m-a-s-l-e which meant masculine while female came from the old french as well familia which meant young woman this is another case just like he and she where the words coincidentally ended up looking similar without having any direct correlation in historical linguistic processes to make them as such Ooman or human this word entomologically derives from proto-indo-european goman which means earthly being as opposed to heavenly being which would refer to gods you have some small glimmer of hope here in that the word does eventually branch off into the wor or the word for man in some languages but this is still too small of a precedent to base any conspiratorial thinking like you are doing off of number five person this one offends me the most simply because i love the fuck out of the Etrusian language and your continued ignorance just irks me at this point person derives from persona from Latin which meant the same meaning which ultimately derived from um, pursue or Etrus Etrusc Etruscan for mask as Etruscans can often have theater performers use masks to give identity to the performers so never once did person have any meaning to do with son so yes this is the natural order of language please never proselytize your faulty ideo ideology and misandrist what the hell is that um hmm okay Sandra's thinking within speaking about word origins and morphology again as useless or as unless you actually do some fact-checking I will school the ever-loving hell out of you stay in your lane hmm so yeah female who man per son see it just goes to show words can be tools words can be used to communicate ideas concepts all kinds of things words can also be used as weapons and in the wrong hands they can be freaking scary weapons which is probably why wasn't it um let's see shakespeare who said the pen is mightier than the sword was that shakespeare yeah words can be very very cutting and if you are not you know if you're not familiar with them or if you're trying to portray yourself as someone that really knows what they're talking about be careful i know from first-hand experience because i've used really big words and i didn't really you know use them properly in a sentence and i got called out for it and then i had to eat some crow wasn't very tasty kind of chewy socked <laughs> just saying okay hi american pie over there on mines okay 
No. Let's see what else I can do. Uh, let's do a fun one, shall we? Since we did a little bit of browbeating on that one, let's do a fun one. Um, I've read this story before, and actually the edibles can be changed. But um, this is from VibrantKundalini.com. Potatoes, Eggs, and Coffee Beans Once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired of fighting and struggling all the time, and it seemed just as one problem was solved, another one soon followed. Her father was a chef, so he took her to the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and placed each one of them on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in the second pot, and ground coffee beans in the third pot. He then let them sit and boil, without saying a word to his daughter. The daughter moaned and impatiently waited, wondering what he was doing. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the eggs out and placed them in a bowl. He then ladled the coffee out and placed it in a cup. Turning to her, he asked, So what do you see? To which she replied, Potatoes, eggs, and coffee. Look closer, he said. She did and noted that they were soft. He asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed a hard-boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. So what does this mean, she asked. He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and the beans had each faced the same adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The pato potato went in strong, hard, and unrelenting, but the boiling water, in the boiling water it became soft and weak. The egg was fragile, with a thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in the boiling water. Then the inside of the egg became hard. However, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. So which one are you? he asked his daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? Yeah. Depends on the situation, I think. Oh, and uh, I like to think I'm a coffee bean, being a little saucy. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I am. Sometimes I turn into an egg and sometimes I'm a potato. It just kind of depends. I could be like a smorgasbord kind of thing for you. <laughs> you never know. Depends on who turned that water on, too. Oh. Ooh, mass shootings, a new manifestation of ancient phenomena, and they're linked to psychiatric drugs. That's, yeah, I don't, oh, thank you, TD. I will check that one out. But first, I need to share this link, because, yeah. Stop it. Okay. Love, 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 love this one. What? Oh, okay. Now I'm going to have to do this again. Okay, from KellyBroganMD.com. From greenmedinfo.com. K 
Okay, mass shootings, a new manifestation of an ancient phenomenon, and they're linked to psychiatric drugs. So, individu individuals perpetrating unspeakable acts of violence is not a new phenomenon, which no, it is not. What's new, rather, are the altered states of consciousness induced by antidepressants and other psychotropic drugs well documented to promote homicidal and suicidal behavior in susceptible individuals. Although semi-automatic weapons have enabled the infliction of mass casualties at an unprecedented scale, massacres perpetrated by lone individuals are not a new phenomenon. Rather, these tragic and inexplicable events may represent an incarnation of a more ancient phenomenon called running amok, formerly believed to be a culture-bound syndrome isolated to certain societies. And yeah, I, you know, when you see someone run amok, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but obviously these are. So the resemblance of mass shootings to running amok is used in the colloquial ver uh, verbiage to indicate an irrational individual wreaking havoc. The linguistic origins of running amok stem from the description of a mentally perturbed individual that engages in unprovoked, homicidal, and subsequently suicidal behavior oftentimes involving an average of 10 victims. Holy crap! Although it's not classified as a psychological condition until 1949, or not 19, 1849, amok was first described anthropologically 200 years ago in isolated tribal island populations such as Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and Laos where geographic seclusion and indigenous spirituality were hypothesized to be cultural factors implicated in this culture-bound syndrome. In his 18th century voyages, for example, Captain Cook recorded Malay tribesmen randomly maiming or executing animals and villagers in a seemingly unprovoked frenzied attack culturally encapsulated explanations localized blame to spirit possession by the Hantu Bilan, an evil tiger spirit in Malay uh, mythology, which was believed to have been the source of the involuntary indiscriminate violence that characterizes amok. In native cultures, sacred healers of folk sector operated under cultural ideologies where illness was believed to be the supernatural origin. So amok was tolerated as an inevitable element of a cultural experience and offenders were brought to trial. As Western expansion encroached on remote cultures, incidents of amok decreased, reinforcing the biased or reinforcing the biased view that so-called primitive cultural ideas were responsible for its pathogenesis. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, episodes of violence in Western civilization began to escalate, culminating in the unparalleled modern st um, statistics where shootings have become so frequent that those unaffected become numb and desensitized to the devastating effects and all live with the threat of an impending shooting as an everyday reality. Formerly considered a rare psychiatric cultural bound syndrome, researcher Manuel St. Martin argues that amok is also prevalent in contemporary industrialized societies. So, the resurgence of this ancient construct in modern shootings? Well, St. Martin postulates that the escalating frequency of mass homicides in industrial cultures in the past quarter century represent a muck, citing that attackers often have a history of 
mental disturbance and that modern day episodes involve similar numbers of victims. He likewise disputes classifications of a muck as a culture bound syndrome since it seems to appear cross culturally and argues instead that culture is the mediating mechanism that determines how the violence manifests. Huh. For example, Jin In Tao or T claimed that a muck appears universally but that its mode of expression in terms of weapons and methods used are culture specific. Furthermore, John Cooper in 1934 postulated that its affliction or affiliation with suicide, a practice transcending arbitrary cultural boundaries, disproves the classification of amok as a culture bound syndrome. Cooper further highlights that amok may be an indirect expression of suicide induced by the same. Uh, psychosocial stressors that produced suicide in contemporary cultures. In essence, the author contends that a muck is a product of mental illness, which has similar etymolo or etiology and psychosocial precipients. Really? Hmm. I always wondered, why do these people that want to commit suicide, why do they always have to take someone with them? Or, you know, not always, but, you know, these fathers that, that kill their whole family and then themselves, what the hell is the deal there? I mean, if you want to commit suicide, if you really, really, really want to end your life, that is your business. But I don't remember anywhere in any paper, seeing any paperwork anywhere that said that uh, just because you have someone that you have become emotionally attached to um, just because they feel suicidal that doesn't mean that I'm volunteering to go with them. Um, are they afraid to go into the hereafter by themselves? What the hell is the deal with this shit? You, you're not allowed to volunteer other people to go to the hereafter with you. If you wish to off yourself and no one can talk you out of it then leave everyone else out of it because they're going to have enough to deal with once you do anyway. But don't be taking people with you. Odds are they did not volunteer for that trip. To go on with this, in his comparison of a muck to modern day shootings, St. Martin advocates prevention by identification of individuals with risk factors and treatment of underlying psychological conditions. Stop putting them on the damn drugs, number one. In addition to co-worker, friend, neighbor, friend, and family observations of susceptible individuals, St. Martin states that physicians are uniquely positioned to collect data regarding those vulnerable to a muck. Here we go, thought police. Since many of these patients preferentially consult general and family practitioners instead of psychiatrists, owing to the perceived stigma attached to consulting a psychiatrist and denial of their mental illness or fear of validating their suspicion that they have a mental disorder. I would much rather talk to a general practitioner than a psychiatrist because psych psychiatrists are scary as juju. They like putting drugs in you. Doctors do too, but man, psychiatrists, it's like, here, take this drug and come back next week for another hour. By the way, that'll be $200. No. Nah. However, the arsenal of tools wielded by the conventional allopathic doctor with their magic bullet remedies and treatment algorithms often falls short. Big Pharma! So, if you wish to address the root cause, psychiatric drugs engender violence. Although Amok explains the deep-seated human tendency to engage in acts of violence, it does nothing to explain the recent increase in frequency. While many argue that access to semi-automatic weapons explains the explosion of mass shootings, one long neglected element of the conversation is that the recent rise in mass homicides coincides 
with the greatest use of cognition-altering psychiatric drugs ever, ever observed in human history. Oftentimes, shooters are branded as bad apples, which is a narrative that allows for the rationalization of such heinous crimes and marginalizes assailants as social deviants and mentally deranged anomalies. However, however convenient this rhetoric is, for imparting meaning to the unfathomable, unfathomable, good God, I'm having trouble tonight. It does nothing to prevent future incidents or to understand the trajectory of events or the biological and psychological vari uh, variables that enable individuals to perpetrate these tragic acts of terrorism. It enables the system and society to wash their hands of any culpability and critical analysis of how people can commit unspeakable violence. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Parents, you need to deal with your children at an early age. Parents, I am a parent and yes, a lot of times these kids and I know people, well he's just so hyper so they put him on Ritalin. What the hell? Number one, children are hyper. That's part of being a child. Uh, to me, putting kids on drugs is a last resort, and Big Pharma is pushing it for younger and younger children. Why? Because they got to keep that profit margin up there. Educate yourself here, peeps. Due to media distortion, the storyline disseminated to public spheres diverges dramatically from conversations played out in the academic sector and these questions remain largely absent from the mainstream dialogue. Why? Because they want to go for the guns. They don't want to go for personal responsibility or looking for the root cause. A perusal of the academic research, however, reveals that psychotropic drugs may be contributing to an epidemic of mass shootings. In 2011, 26.8 million adults in the United States used pharmaceutical drugs for mental illness. Now remember that number. There's like, what, 300 million people in the United States? 26.8 million of them were on some kind of pharmaceutical drug for mental illness. Two years later, the Medical Expenditure Panel Survey, or MEPS, found that nearly 17% of American adults filled at least one prescription for a psychiatric drug. 17%. That's a good-sized chunk of the population here, peeps. Especially when you consider a good share of that 17% is of the adult range. Now, psychiatric drugs, many of which are based upon the flawed serotonin theory of depression, send almost 90,000 people to the emergency room yearly as a result of medication side effects ranging from delirium to head injuries to movement disorders and one in five of these visits culminates in hospitalization. This figure is an underestimate as it excludes visits to the emergency department secondary to drug abuse, self-injurious behavior and or suicide attempts. The preliminary reports from Las Vegas shooting that left at least 58 people dead indicate that the alleged killer was prescribed Valium, a sedative hypnotic drug classified as a benzodiazepine. And relevant to this insight is the meta-analysis of 46 studies published in the Australian and New Zealand Journal of Psychi Psychiatry, which illuminated that an association between benzodiazepine used and subsequent aggressive behavior was found in the majority of the more rigorous studies. 
especially in those individuals with an underlying propensity towards anxiety and hostility. In addition, a prospective cohort study in nearly of nearly 1,000 Finnish subjects published in the world or in the journal World Psychiatry demonstrated that current use of benzodiazepines elevated risk of homicide by 45 percent. 45 percent. That's a big elevation because of one big pharma drug. Well, not one drug, but one category. Data compiled from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Adverse Event Reporting System, which you don't have, it that's not very accurate either, but it um, highlights that use of some antidepressant medications is disproportionately related to the increased number of violent events. The authors report that Veronicline, whatever that is, which increases the availability of dopamine and antidepressants and serotonin, serotonergic, whatever that is, <clears throat> those effects were most strongly and consistently implicated with drugs in cases report or in case reports of homicide, homicidal, I, um, homicidal ideas, whatever, physical assault, physical abuse, or violence-related sin symptoms, violence-related symptoms. I like how they put that. They always come more, how is that George Carlin puts that? Um, I'll think of it probably at two in the morning. <laughs> hey, apparently, da, 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 da. let's see, at the epitome of this discussion is the deleterious side effects of psychotropic drugs are ill-publicized and patients do not receive sufficient information about the devastating um, sequel that can result from their use. Which this does not surprise me one dang bit because they also do not notify the patients as to what is in vaccines or in lots of other medications because, well, Big Pharma doesn't want you to know about those things because if you knew about them, you wouldn't take it and there would go their profit margin. Little of the public knows that in 2004, the Food and Drug Administration issued a black box warning for antidepressants, advertising that they are associated with suicidal uh, tendencies and behavior in two to three children out of every hundred who are administered these drugs. Why are you giving these to children? In fact, the meta-analysis of 372 randomized clinical trials entailing nearly 100,000 subjects elucidated that the rate of suicidal thoughts and action was double in these patients assigned to receive an antidepressant compared to a placebo. Now, I'm, I'm getting tired of this, <laughs> in case you can't tell. Uh, but I do want to put this out there. I've been listening to um, Herb Plus Beads. Uh, his name's Tony, and God, I can't remember how to pronounce his last name. He does some really fun videos over on YouTube and basically he gives you recipes of different things that you can try and not only does he give you these recipes but he makes them right then and there and then he takes it so you you can see and the video lasts a good five ten minutes after he takes whatever the concoction is so that you can see that it's not an adverse effect he's not dropping dead and he's been doing this for quite a few years so obviously his concoctions have not killed him yet and he seems like a very happy-go-lucky gentleman, so I don't think it's giving him suicidal tendencies either. But he is he is really doing an awful lot of stuff about chemtrails and speaking about the nanoparticles and how they are getting in there and messing with not only your neurosynapsis, you know, what's going on in your brain, but since they are nanoparticles, they are able to get way down deep into the cells and they are starting to mutate your DNA. 
Now, he doesn't tell you all this fun stuff just to scare you. He gives you all kinds of recipes, different things that you can do depending on um, what kind of actual physical symptoms you are having. And these are n maybe not all natural things, but they're not, you know, they're not, um, there's not GMO, there's not, I mean, sure, there aren't, everything's made up of chemicals anyway. So some of the chemicals are actually processed chemicals, and some of them come from nature. But he gives you all of these recipes on how to, so in other words, he's not just fear-mongering, he's giving you something to help you. And then he also tells you, and do your research. Don't just take my word for it. Do your own research. So, this article is just getting longer and longer and, and depressing me, and I just can't keep going with it. So, um, but yeah. You took Valium? I've, I've never, yes, Moosey, Ritalin is a narcotic too. I've never taken some of that stuff. And yes, Circle, it is really fucking wrong when the world is so sick that humans need to numb their feelings. It really is wrong. Really, really, really. Something messed up with that. But, oh man. Thank you, TD, for sharing that over there on that FN site. Although I could not make it all the way through it. Wow. You know, it... Mm, it's easy for me to say because I've never, I mean, sure, I've taken, you know, I've taken acid and some of that other shit, and, and it was like, woo, but it wasn't something that I really wanted to stick with or, or continue doing so. I've never done shrooms, you know, I've never done peyote, I've never done ayahuasca, any of those other fun mood alterating, and I do not want anything from Big Pharma, nothing from Big Pharma, but wow, I just, anytime I see that somebody puts a child on some of that stuff, it's like, oh, sweetheart, have you not checked have you not read the insert? You know, you can request that from the pharmacist. And before you give this to your child, read that frickin' insert. And if you don't understand the words, get you a dictionary or something. Yes, TD, chemtrails also cause Morgellons disease. And actually, this Tony that does those videos has Morgellons. And so he he's done quite a few videos on how to treat Morgellons giving people multiple options on how to deal with it. Really, he's a he's a fun, smart guy, you know? And he's got a t-shirt that says, I'm just a guy who knows things. Hey, cool, you know? He knows his chemistry, you know? And, and he knows what works with what. And he also knows that don't just load up on this because when you load up on that, that doesn't mean your body's going to absorb it because you need to have enough of this in your system in order for your body to absorb whatever it is you're taking. So he's fun. He is fun. No, Grimmy, I'm not on shrooms right now. And uh, circles, I have done speed once and never again. I did white crosses once. Never again. I buzzed like crazy for an hour, and then I crashed hard. <laughs> yeah, Circle, I am. I Circle's got it. <laughs> yep. I really don't. I mean, coffee, that's my drug, <laughs> I guess you could say. I do like my coffee. Um, let's see. Uh, where else am I going to go? Because that one just really, mm, enough of that. Um, oh, I know. I don't know if I shared this with you guys or not. But this is a list. Um, he has a website, 
and this is a list of all of the files that you are free to download as you choose. So I think that's kind of cool. And I'll go ahead and put this over in the FN site as well, just in case anybody is curious, wants to look up any of his fun stuff. And you know, if you find if you find fault in something, I'll bet you he would not have a problem with you uh, emailing him or commenting on one of his videos and letting him know, dude, seriously, I was checking this out and this ain't right. And and he'll get. I'll bet you he'd get into a discussion with you. I've listened to enough of his radio stuff that he does respond to emails, and you know it's kind of cool. Kind of cool. So let's see. Where's my little? There we go. He's fun. Let's just put it that way. I really enjoy listening to him and and watching some of the concoctions he comes up with. Um. Okay, here we go. This is one just to let you know how messed th messed up things are. It's from the latimes.com. I don't remember where I saw it earlier today. Uh, possibly over on Mines. Electronics recycling innovator faces prison for trying to extend computers' lives. Eric Lundgren is obsessed with recycling electronics. He built an electric car out of recycled parts that far outdistanced a Tesla in a test. He launched what he thinks is the first electronic hybrid recycling facility in the United States, which turns discarded cell phones and other electronics into functional devices, slowing the stream of harmful chemicals and metals into landfills and the environment. His Chatsworth company processes more than 41 million pounds of e-waste every year and counts IBM, Motorola, and Sprint among its clients. But an idea Lundgren had, uh, had to prolong the life of personal computers could land him in prison. Prosecutors said that the 33-year-old ripped off Microsoft Corp by manufacturing 28,000 counterfeit disks with the company's window operating system on them. He was convicted of conspiracy and copyright infringement, which brought a 15-month prison sentence and a $50,000 fine. In a rare move, though, the Federal Appeals Court has granted an emergency stay of the sentence giving Lundgren another chance to make his argument that the whole thing was a misunderstanding. Lundgren does not deny that he made the discs or that he hoped to sell them, but he says this was no profit-making scheme. By his account, he just wanted to make it easier to extend the usefulness of second-hand computers, keeping more of them out of the trash. The case centers on restore disks, which can be used only on computers that already have the licensed Windows software and can be downloaded free from the computer's manufacturer, in this case, Dell. The disks are re excuse me, routinely provided to buyers of new computers to enable them to reinstall their operating system if the computer's hardware fails or must be wiped clean but they often are lost by the time um, by the time used computers find their way to the refurbisher. Lundgren said that he thought electronics companies wanted the reuse or wanted the reuse of computers to be difficult so that people would buy new ones. I started learning that what planned obsolescence was, he said, and I realized companies make laptops that only lasted as long as the insurance would last. And it infuriated me. Yeah, I've noticed that too, honey. It's not just computers that do that. That's not what a healthy society should have. I agree. He thought that producing and selling restore disks to computer refurbishers, saving them the hassle of downloading the software and burning new disks, would encourage more secondhand sales. 
in his view, the new owners were entitled to the software, and this just made it easier. But the government and Microsoft did not see it that way. Gee, I'm shocked. Federal prosecutors in Florida obtained a 21-count indictment against Lundgren and his business partner, and Microsoft filed a letter seeking $420,000 in restitution for lost sales. Fuck you who? Lundgren claims that the assistant U.S. attorney on the case told him, Microsoft wants your head on a platter, and I'm going to give it to them. Huh. Bill Gates to the rescue again, you little weasel. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Miami and Microsoft declined to comment. Senior U.S. District Judge Daniel T.K. Hurley observed that none of the discs Lundgren made were actually sold and declined to order him to pay restitution. Hurley imposed a 15-month sentence that was less than half of that called for by federal sentencing guidelines, which indicated 36 to 47 months. In court, the judge made it clear that this was a tough case. This case is especially difficult, Hurley told Lundgren at his sentencing last May, because of who you are today and in terms of who you have become. The judge received evidence of Lundgren's recycling company, IT Asset Partners, his projects to clean up e-waste in Ghana and China, and in 2016 initiative in which Lundgren's company repaired and donated more than 14,000 cell phones and $100,000 to the Cell Phones for Soldiers organization to benefit U.S. soldiers deployed overseas. Lundgren grew up in Linden, Washington, where as a 16-year-old, he became the town's computer recycler after the local sheriff's department heard about his talent for fixing or reusing computer parts. Some parts of a computer, for example, the Apple touchscreen, are proprietary and cannot be recycled. But 95% of a computer, Lundgren said, such as the battery or the motor or the circuits, are generic and can be reused or repurposed. He has devoted much time to recovering discarded batteries, whether from cars or computers, and reusing them in wheelchairs, electronics, and various vehicles. At 19, Lundgren moved to Los Angeles and started his first electronics recycling company, and at 20, he landed his first big client, American Airlines refurbishing and selling about 40,000 computers a year. The computers came with the original license or certificate of authenticity stickers and with product key numbers on the sticker. Though their hard drives had been erased, so reinstalling Windows was legal, Lundgren, Lundgren said, blah, 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 blah. So if they bought or if they brought in a computer without a certificate of authenticity, Lundgren said of his customers, then we'd part it out and not refurbish and resell it. He added that clients, including Dell, Asus, that's A-S-U-S, -S, however you say that, Lenovo, and Coca-Cola, handing or handling their discarded computers. Lundgren became intrigued with following the world's e-waste system and wound up moving to China. I learned the back end of what happens when things are thrown away. He became more focused on reducing the ever-growing heaps of discarded plastics and glass um, that a use-it-and-toss-it society creates. So eliminating the burning of electronic trash that pollutes the air and combating the leakage of computer-based chemicals that filter into the water. While in China, Lundgren hit upon an idea of selling restore discs to computer refurbishers. The discs work if computers still have their license and product keys available. And the license transfers with the computer, no matter who owns it. 
Microsoft does not sell restore disks, Lundgren said. Microsoft sells licenses that enable um, or licenses that enable their software to work from $300 for a new operating system to $25 for a license for a refurbisher who wants to resell a computer that does not already have a licensed copy of Windows. In 2013, federal authorities intercepted shipments of 28,000 restored disks that Lundgren had manufactured in China and sent to his sales partner in Florida. The, di the disks had labels nearly identical to the disks provided by Dell for its computers and had the Windows and Dell logos. If I had just written Eric's restore disk on there, it would have been fine, Lundgren said, which, yeah, that probably would have been the way to do it. As a result of violating the copyright of Windows and Dell, Lundgren pleaded guilty to two of the 21 counts against him. But he believed that because the disks had no retail value and were seized before they were sold, he would not receive a prison time. His sentence was based on the financial loss involved. The Microsoft attorney, however, Bonnie McNaughton, wrote to Hurley, the judge, describing the case as one of software piracy, costing the com computer industry billions of dollars annually, and saying that prosecution was important to deter others from engaging in the illicit global trade of decoupled products activation keys. Ah, uh, in other words, stop them from cutting into our profit margin. Basically meaning the sale or trade of the license stickers applied to the original licensed computer. Microsoft calculated that Lundgren's 28,000 restore disks could have been sold to refurbishers for $20 each and that 75% of that total was Microsoft's average profit. So it demanded restitution of $420,000. We demand it because we just do. Apparently, as their expert witness at the sentencing, prosecutors called a Microsoft program manager from Ireland to explain to the judge how the disks worked and their value. Jonathan McGloin testified that Microsoft licensed Windows to computer manufacturers such as Dell and also licensed them to make restore and recovery disks to be included with the new computers. McGloin also testified that Microsoft charges computer refurbishers about $25 for a new license and a copy of the software, but didn't differentiate that from what was done by Lundgren who was not making a new copy of the software and intended his restore disks only for computers that were already licensed. In essence, I got in the way of Microsoft's profits. So they pushed this into federal court on false pretense, Lundgren said. He said McGloin testified that the free restore CD was worth the same price as a new Windows operating system with a license. This was false, an inaccurate testimony provided by Microsoft in an attempt to set a precedent that will scare away future recyclers and refurbishers from reusing computers without first paying Microsoft again for another license. Anyone successfully extending the life cycle of computers or diverting these computers from landfills for reuse in society is essentially standing in the way of Microsoft's profits. Lundgren called his own expert witness, Glenn Weedock, an author of numerous software books who testified for the government in a ma um, major antitrust case against Microsoft that was resolved in 2001. Weedock was asked, in your opinion, without a code, either product key or COA, which is the Certificate of Authenticity, what is the value of these re reinstallation disks? To which he responded, zero or near zero. 
Why would anybody pay for one? Lundgren's lawyer asked. To which he responded, there is a convenience factor associated with them. Still, Hurley decided that Lundgren's 28,000 restore discs had a value of $700,000, and that qualified Lundgren for a 15-month term along with a $50,000 fine. He denied Lundgren's request to remain free pending his appeal, but the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals granted the request as Lundgren was about to surrender for imprisonment. I thought it was freeware, Lundgren said of the restore discs. If it's free, then I'm just going to dul uh, duplicate the free repair tool and give it away. That'll be fine, he thought. The values in the license, they didn't understand that. His appeal is still pending before the 11th Circuit. So, that was very interesting. And yeah, and that's dated from today, or yesterday, I mean. So, yeah, don't cut into Microsoft's profit margin. They will get ugly with you. And yes, Miss Kate, nobody wants to admit the real reason behind mass shootings. Booby leaks, what are you guys talking about? Oh, I see. I see what you're doing. Crazy guys over there on that effing or on RLM talking about boobies. That's a flasher thing. <laughs> Thanks, TD. TD just shared a little thing that says sloths only poop once a week and they do a little poo dance. <laughs> How funny. Oh, Microsoft, Microsoft, you greedy bastards. Can you tell I really don't care for Bill Gates at all? He's, he's just like Mr. Slug as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and I say that as I'm working on a computer that's running Windows. <laughs> I don't, the, okay, the software is okay, but he's a douche. I don't have to like the person that created the software to be able to use the software. He is a douche. Sorry, my personal opinion. Actually, I'm not sorry, but you know, what the hell. Okay, dang, it's getting late enough. I need to check the pig. See what happened this in history. They were so full of it for Valentine's Day. Anyone seen a diaper-wearing winged little punk named Cupid? No, I haven't. Those guys over at the pig, they just don't have much use for Cupid. Okay. In their word of the day, public restroom, that's a phrase, sweetheart, but that's okay. It's a place with toilet seats that make you wish you could be taught how to hover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the quotable quote section, wealth is not his that has it, but his that enjoys it. Oh, okay. That's from Benjamin Franklin. Um, okay, Patty the Irish Wrestler. This is in their Tasty Tidbits. A Russian and an Irish wrestler were set to square off for the Olympic gold medal. Before the final match, the Irish wrestler's trainer came to him and said, Now, Patty, don't forget all the research we've done on this Russian. He's never lost a match because of this pretzel hold he has. It ties you up in knots. So whatever you do, do not, do not let him get you in that hold. If he does, you're finished. To which the Irishman nodded in acknowledgement. As the match started, the Irishman and the Russian circled each other several times, looking for an opening. All of a sudden, the Russian lunged forward, grabbing the Irishman and wrapping him up in the dreaded pretzel hold. A sigh of disappointment arose from the crowd, and the trainer buried his face in his hands, for he knew all was lost. 
He couldn't watch the inevitable happen. Suddenly, <laughs> um, oh God, suddenly there was a long, high-pitched scream, then a cheer from the crowd, and the trainer raised his eyes just in time to see the Russian go flying up in the air. His back hit the mat with a thud, and the Irishman collapsed on top of him, making the p <laughs> the pin and winning the match. The trainer was astounded. When he finally got his wrestler alone, he asked, so how did you ever get out of that hold? No one has ever done it before. To which the wrestler answered, Well, I was all ready to give up when he got me in that hold, but at the last moment I opened my eyes and saw a pair of testicles right in front of my face. <laughs> I thought I had nothing to lose. So, with my last ounce of strength, I stretched out my neck and bit those babies <laughs> as hard as I could. <laughs> the trainer exclaimed, that's what finished him off. And the, the Irish wrestler said, not really. <laughs> you, <laughs> you'd be amazed how strong you are when when you bite your own nuts. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to pee myself. <laughs> oh, that's just wrong. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. I wonder where they got that one from. Oh, man. I know I ruined the punchline. I know I did because I couldn't say it as laugh. It's hard. <laughs> but. <clears throat> oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Porcus and Hambo. I needed that one. My eyes are leaking. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> okay, this date in history. I got to get to... Where is it at? There it is. Oh, my Lord. My eyes are leaking. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's see. This date in history, the 16th of February, 1801. <laughs> the United States Constitution passes muster with flying colors when a house breaks electoral college tie and confers presidency on Thomas Jefferson. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Mm, huh, thank you, guys. This date in history, the 16th of February, 1861. A new era of naval warfare begins when the Confederate submarine H.L. Hunley ventures forth to sink a Yankee dog ship, Hus um, Housatonic? Housatonic? Really? Huh. This date in history, the 16th of February, 1876, a down-east dude, Julius Wolfe, inadvertently launches a metaphor when he cans sardines for the first time. Ah, that's when they came about. And finally, the 16th of February, 1953, Hall of Fame baseball star Ted the Splendid Splinter Williams is shot down while defending his country as a pilot during the Korean War. Um, 1.2 billion. Wow, what? 1.2 billion? I have no idea what that's about, dear. Unless you didn't finish deleting. Huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is micro, sh or, yeah, micro shaft. Most definitely Rob works. Oh, okay. I've got to give you, i got to copy and paste that punchline, because I know I totally fudgered it up. So I'm going to just put this over <laughs> here in the RLM, because, wow. Um... That is just funny. <sighs> Who's satanic? I there's lots of just just look at DC. 
and just take your pick. There's an awful lot of them there. <laughs> That's the punchline for those of you in the chat. Yeah, I just, wow. Oh, man. So, okay. How about the News in Zingers by Argus Hamilton? Um, the Washington Post howled over POTUS Trump's proposed budget because it cuts 23% of the Environmental Protection Agency budget. The cuts are a way of saying what's done is done due to global warming. All the future Winter Olympics will be held in Antarctica. Okay. Global warming is not real. Um... Attorney General Jeff Sessions praised sheriffs for upholding Anglo-American legal traditions and was called a racist by liberals. They can't stand that we're the most shining example of British imperialism. Next, they'll boycott chess tournaments because white guy or white always gets the first move. Oh, wow, I hadn't thought of that. That is, wow, that's chess piecist or something like that. Um, POTUS Trumple Silskin rolled out a blockbuster $2 trillion budget Monday. Wow. The debt-raising budget lavishes federal money on the U.S. military, on infrastructure, and on entitlement programs. Suddenly, the Democrats are rocking their brains trying to remember why they hate this Trump fellow. Hmm, entitlement programs. If you're calling Social Security an entitlement program, I'm thinking giving me back what you already stole. Oh, wait, that's probably not going to happen. Um, let's see. POTUS Trump said his infrastructure bill will pair government with private enterprise. Oh, joy, oh, bliss. The Demon Craps said it had turned freeways into toll roads till only the rich could use them. The fastest way to turn rich L.A. Democrats into Republicans is give them a 10-minute drive to work every morning. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, how about this one? South Korea issued a plea for world peace in their Olympic opening ceremony Friday. There was one disturbance in the stands. Two comedians made up, made up to look like Donald Trump and North Korea's Kim Jong-un were kicked out of the stadium, but only because security thought they were real. <laughs> now, that's funny. <clears throat> How about this one? The White House refused to release the Democratic memos on the House intelligence findings in the Russian election meddling probe. Pundits on both sides need to relax. Nothing will come of the Hillary or Trump investigations for the simple reason that the law has never applied to baby boomers. Huh? No, no, the law has never applied to those douchebags. Because they write the laws, therefore they don't apply to them. That Just ask them, they'll tell you. How about this one? The LA Times reports a study showing that millennials have totally different value systems than baby boomers do. I had to find out for myself. So last week at a restaurant, my millennial date advised me that I was demonstrating why white privilege or my white privilege by ordering without looking at the menu. Huh? Huh? Okay. Wow, they'll just go to all kind of lengths, won't they? Crazy people. Crazy. Okay, let's see. Where do I want to go next? Oh, you know, they keep saying that we're in trouble and all of these shootings and all this other fun stuff. And I don't remember who shared. This was, this was from March of 2013, by the way. Um, the original or some of this original stuff. And then it was reposted the 25th of April of 2017 um, over on crimeresearch.org. Apparently, murders in the U.S. very uh, murders in U.S. very concentrated. 54% of U.S. counties in 2014 had zero murders. Zero. 
and 2% of counties have 51% of the murders. Wow! And you know what? Those are some of the most populated places in the country. See, I keep telling you, you pack that damn many people together, and they're going to get cranky, and someone's going to try and cull the herd. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and share this with y'all, so you can kind of peruse it at your leisure. Um, but it really is kind of interesting. You know, the different, of course, you can see, um, it's the Los Angeles Basin, pretty much, actually, just pretty much southern L.A. or southern California, and a little bit of the middle of California, and then you got Florida, and then you got up in the New York area, and then you got Chicago, and yeah. Then on the Arizona border, yeah, there's probably, there's a lot of, but yeah, yeah, it's kind of scary. Stay away from those places, and those of you that live there, get out of there. The hell, why are you living there? People are crazy there, which is probably why they're living there. Okay, um, let's see. We'll do that one. I'm going to go back to my pocket because I do have a couple other things. I know I stuck them in there I wanted to get to. Um, but that one kind of caught my eye. So, get it out of there. Um, do I want to go there? No. Hmm. Blacklisted news. Do I want to go there? Hmm. Uh, no. I think I'll just find something else. How about Fark? I haven't been to Fark in a while. Fark, 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 Fark. Oh, good Lord. A Fark headline. Florida shoot school shooter was... On a shooting team sponsored by who? The NRA. Uh, Merck. Let's see. Uh, ooh, hey, in their weird section, a goat in Georgia is available for adoption after three men allegedly force-fed the animal cocaine and whiskey. What? Why would you do that to a goat? U.S. Holios. This is from GWINNetDailyPost.com. Hmm. A Grayson man is being held at the Gwinnett, oh, that's what it is, it's Gwinnett County Jail, after a video of him and two other men force-feeding a goat cocaine and whiskey caught the attention of local law enforcement. See, it's not just Florida. Duh! Georgia, being in close proximity, is trying to get the Georgia thing going on. Uh, Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office investigators executed search warrants at 28-year-old Sergio Palomares Guzman's Grayson Home, Grayson New Hope Road Home. Holy crap! Oh well, um, they did this on Thursday. Um, and this is where he lived and worked as a horse trainer. Oh, great. What did he do to the horses? Hmm. He's been charged with aggravated cruelty to animals in response to the video, which shows um, him holding the goat's horns while a second male suspect inserted cocaine into the goat's nostril and then forced the goat's mouth open while a second male suspect poured whiskey into the goat's mouth. What, whatever would possess you to do such a thing? That just, wow. Apparently he shared this video that he had made with others and um, got caught when a tipster notified the authorities. He was transported to jail where deputies are holding him for immigration authorities. Two other men were seen in the video, though they remain unidentified, and investigators believe that they live in North Carolina. Ah, oh, great. Cross state lines. Abusers of goats. 
um, the owner of the ranch um, apparently had and employer of this gentleman, we'll use that term loosely, had no knowledge of the in incident, which apparently took place on January 2nd. Oh, they were ringing in the new year with the goat. Way to go. The goat was apparently safely transported to the animal shelter where he received a veterinary exam and was given a clean bill of health. Apparently, Guzman waived ownership of the goat Friday afternoon, and he is now available for adoption. So anyone interested in adopting the goat can contact the animal shelter, and there is a phone number attached to this. Wow. Wow. People do some stupid shit. Wow. Okay. Let's see. What else do they have on here? Come on, Fark. Drunk guy gets in a fight at a strip club, drives off, runs from cops, avoids a canine, but can't hide from the police drone. Okay, yeah. Um... Oh, okay. Now this one, I remember hearing something about it earlier. Um, from mlive.com. Apparently, and this was posted this morning. Hmm. An all-out brawl on a carnival cruise results in family of 20-plus getting kicked off. Hmm. More than 20 members of an extended family have been forcibly removed from a carnival, carnival cruise ship after an all-out brawl broke out on board that left other passengers scared for their safety. The Australian Associated Press... Um, said that the massive brawl shown in the video below came on the heels of days of fighting on the Carnival, Le uh, Carnival Legend cruise ship. The family was, was removed via a small police boat and the cruise ship itself was forced to dock. New South Wales police are investigating the incident but it is believed the fighting between the two groups on the ship started after someone stepped on a thong. <laughs> Stepped on a thong. Was someone wearing that thong? And was it the thong that goes on your feet or the thong that goes between the butt cheeks? Oh, wait. I don't want to know. Apparently, Carnival security can be seen rushing to the group of men fighting and also trying to stop the passengers from recording the ordeal on their phones. <laughs> Good luck with that. Didn't happen, did it? Instead of stopping a man from kicking a person on the ground, the crew member lunges at a bystander recording the ordeal. Oh, good job. At about 1.30 p.m. today, six men and three teenage boys were removed from the ship at Twofold Bay, Eden, police said in the statement. A further 14 passengers, including women and children, also left the ship, and the group was transported to Canabera, where their where other travel arrangements were made. Hmm. Uniform security rushes to the area and can be seen kicking and punching the tangled mess of men. <laughs> Police said that the fighting began around 12.45 a.m. Friday morning and that removing an entire family and docking the ship was an unprecedented step. We apply zero tolerance approach to excessive behavior that affects our other guests, said a carnival spokesman. And in line with this policy, we contacted New South Wales Police uh, this morning and we asked them to attend Carnival Legion in Eden today to remove a large family group from the ship that had been involved in violent and disruptive acts. Carnival Cruise Vice President Jennifer Vanderkreek echoed those remarks to the Australian AP in saying that it is always our last resort. There is also video posted on 3AW's website that shows a number of people being removed from the boat. So, 
cool or not so cool. Wow. You know, when you're out in the middle of the ocean, you really don't want to pick a fight because someone will throw your ass in the drink for the sharks. Just saying. Dumbasses. Okay, let's see if I can find one more something that's redeeming. Something redeeming. I know. Mueller and Dykes, thir yeah, 13 Russians for interfering in 2016 selections. How do you interfere in a selection? That's what I want to know. I heard one of the guys at work was saying something about, um, he had heard that Facebook was in trouble. Oh, somebody was selling all of their shares in Facebook because Facebook was involved in the manipulation of the selection results. And it's like, really? Really? And something about there were so many Russian people that had done something on Facebook that had changed the the results of the election. And I thought, I looked at him and I said, you do realize that Facebook is not just the United States. You know, like it's multiple countries, right? And he said, well, yeah. And I said, so it's really not that much of a stretch that there were possibly 15 different accounts, you know, with Russian IP addresses that were making snarky, smart-ass, we hate Hitlery comments. That's right, Grimner. You'll get your ass keel hauled. So, you know, but this this stuff of Facebook actually changing, really? Really? Crazy ass people. Okay, four foot iguana. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let's check this shit out. It's in Florida. Just one more before I hit the road. Hmm. From myfox8.com. In Jensen Beach, Florida, a Martin County Sheriff's Office investigated an unusual intruder. Ah, this was Tuesday. Photos on their Facebook page showed an animal service officer corralling a four-foot iguana that made its way into a family's laundry room. You know, that's not as easy as it may seem. You know, you may think that corralling a four-foot iguana is easy. No. I pet sit for someone, used to, like about 20 years ago, for someone that had um, a four-foot iguana and a three-foot iguana. And I tell you what, if they don't want to go, they ain't going to go. <laughs> They're tough little buggers. Apparently, the Pine Lake Village homeowners called the sheriff's office when they noticed an exotic character lounging near their washing machine. Once the reptile was cornered, it was taken into custody without incident and transported from the scene to a more appropriate iguana-friendly facility. Whoa. Those things are... Yeah. And they bite, too. Oh, and by the way, if they whip you with the tail, yeah, we're talking bruise here. Them things can... I mean, they can be fun, you know, if, if, you know, if they want to be cuddly, they will be cuddly. But man, if they don't want to be cuddly, look out. It's not going to be fun. Oh, really, Chloe? Oh, there. <laughs> kick them when they're up, kick them with their tail. Yeah, rah, rah, ree, kick them in the knee, rah, rah, ras, kick them in the other knee. Oh, well. Guess what, y'all? I'm just about out of time. So, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here in RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, and all kinds of other RLM radio places. Be sure to stick around or come back later at, let's see, what is it, 10 o'clock my time. So, that's 11 o'clock Eastern time. Freaker's Ball will be kicking it off. So, yeah, and that's a good time had by all. That's Grimmy and Moose Girl. I will be back tomorrow at noon Eastern time, 11 o'clock my time for the dork table with old flash -a rooney dork where we'll talk about just about anything but i can pretty much guarantee flash is gonna at least once say boobs at least once <laughs> also this weekend at noon eastern time grimner will be kicking off the blues on sunday and there'll probably be a rousing game of trivia going on in the rlm chat if you want to come on over and join in the fun 
And directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. Hal always has very valuable information, and he's one sharp feller. He's a, I could see him taking you behind the woodshed and open up a can of whoop-ass. Then Sunday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Gary Ellen Gigi's boo with The Road Less Traveled. So there really is lots and lots going on this weekend. Plus, JJ's is probably going to pop in and out from time to time, I'm sure. He likes to do that. And if he's not on the RLM, well, then go on over to, web, to webcom.co.uk and you'll hear JJ's. He's always playing something. He's just always playing around. Let's see. I still have time. Damn it. How did I do that? How did I get through that so fast? Hi, Slim Jim's Flim. I saw you over there chitty chatting lots and lots and many and some. Um, how about I close Fark and I check out. Let me check one more. Hmm. How about I go to the alternative news side? What's over there? Hmm. Now or never. Time to reclaim our food independence. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Time to learn to grow your own. And that applies to all kinds of things. <laughs> Let's see. Um, ooh. Breast milk. The gift that keeps on giving. Babies who are exclusively breastfed have less than half the risk of eczema as teenagers than those who were not. Wow! Hmm. Ooh, and in their environment. Yeah, you all need to come over. I'm just going to go ahead and share this link. All kinds of way cool headlines. Um, under the environmental news, marijuana farmers are destroying natural ecosystems as quest for profits outweighs green agricultural um, practices. Hmm, that kind of reminds me of, um, you know, out in California, a lot of the pot out there is laced with some really, really nasty pesticides that, you know, even the tobacco industry won't use. And you know it's bad juju if even the tobacco industry won't use it. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Plants synthesize miraculous medicine at molecular levels. That's from the Health Ranger. Wow, POTUS Trump saves the elephants of Zimbabwe. Big game hunting trophy ban in to remain in place. Yay, Trumples! He saved the elephants. Let's see, which one? I never pay attention to that. Let's see. Media, oh, hey. Media invent two fake Trump scandals in first day of Asia trip. First, it was Trump supposedly uh, botching Japanese auto manufacturing, and then, what was that? Huh. All kinds of fun headlines over here. Putin even made a headline. Because he's concerned that there will soon be genetically modified superhuman soldiers calling on world leaders to agree to limitations and regulations. Ah, uh, yeah. I wonder if maybe some of that isn't um, to do with uh, all this shit they're spraying in the sky. Which, that, that reminds me. I will go to YouTube and I will find his channel. I will go to YouTube. I will find his channel. I will share it with you. <laughs> Just because. The uh, beads guy. Let me find him real fast. Shouldn't take. There we go. Um, Herbs plus beadworks. That is the YouTube channel. And um, he really is fun and pretty informative. And yeah, you do need to do your own research as well. Because we're all ooman. We all make mistakes. And uh, yeah, but go check him out. It's kind of funny, kind of cool. In any case, I am officially out of time. So y'all have an absolutely amazing 
rest of your evening. Be sure to stick around for the Freakers Ball, and I will catch up with you later. But in the meantime, please remember, I truly do love you, and I wish you all enough. Good night.